coming to you from the Deep South. This is the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast. High impact leadership is not reserved for leaders, and it has nothing to do with your position, title, or rank. However, it does have everything to do with your character. It's time to climb to the next level and beyond, personally and professionally. Now, let's start making it happen with your host, Max Story. Hello, and thanks for listening to the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast today. So I hope you enjoyed uh, last week's interview with Jason Haynes. You know, I, I get a lot of requests for people, some 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 big names out there in the, in the leadership industry and other types of industries who what they really want to do is leverage my my podcast network. But anyway, I get a lot of requests from a lot of people who want actually want to be on my podcast. And the main reason they want to be on there is so I'll share it with everybody and everybody will hear them and 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 a lot of people who do podcasts like me want to have a lot of different guests on so those people will share it with their network and then people like me will get a lot of visibility but i don't really play that that game that most people play so you, if if you know me and you've been listening long enough i only feature people on my podcast that i actually know most of them are are clients or either they're they're people who've reached out to me and and uh share about how they've used my content to improve their personal and professional lives. And, and Jason Haynes, if you listen to the podcast, you know, he's, he's kind of both. He got licensed to, uh, teach a lot of my content, but he's also used it in his personal life and his professional life. So it was a privilege to have him and feature him and his story on on the podcast. And, uh, always extend an invitation to any of you out there. If you want to get on and talk about, how my content or Rhea's content or both of our content has has helped you because you've read it or listened to it and then applied it in your life and gotten results, be sure to reach out to me. My my cell phone's 334-728-4143. And, and let me talk with you. If you want to get on the podcast, we probably can make it happen because many of you may not realize how inspiring you could be to someone else similar to you i mean that's how i got started but anyway so we're gonna get back today we're on chapter eight in my 30-part series on my book who's buying you until you sell yourself you won't sell much and that subtitle the subtitle there until you sell yourself you won't sell much (laughs) when it comes to selling that subtitle's packed full of what i call leadership truth so chapter eight in this 30 part series, the, the title of the chapter is actually leverage your character. And that, that's what you need to do, whether you're in sales or not, you need to leverage your character. And the subtitle of this chapter explains to you why your character will either launch you or limit you. And that's in anything that you do. But again, this series is focused on how to sell with a high degree of character. So that'll be the emphasis. But anybody, anywhere, in any job, at any level, can learn from this series on selling. And as I've mentioned in the past, you, you're going to be selling something. At a minimum, guess what you're selling? Yourself. And if, you want, if you're in professionals, uh, if you're in a professional sales position where that's your job, that's how you earn, earn your income is, is you have to sell a product or a service, th- this is definitely for you. So I want to start off with a quote from from Jim Rohn, and he says, Character isn't something you were born with and can't change, like your fingerprints. It's something you weren't born with and must take responsibility for forming. We, We each form our character. Every choice we make forms and shapes our character. And talking about sales i'm recording this on uh, december the 4th and on december the 2nd just a few days ago saturday i was on a call with jason denham the a video call that he does once a month called the kilgore leadership drip he does it once a month first saturday of each month with his team and i was i was i was on that video call he had about i don't know 30 40 
50 people in a room, people that work on his team, all different levels. Jason, again, is vice president of electrical construction. So he had senior leaders on his team in the room. He had entry-level people. He had their spouses. Some of their spouses were there. Some of them had family members, brothers or sisters or, and children. But what was cool is uh, they, they got a relationship with one of their vendors, out, an outside sales guy, Mr. Daniel Gamel. I hope I'm Gamil maybe is a better way to say it. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name. Spelled G-A-M-M-I-L-L. But uh, he's outside sales guy with Lone Star Electric Supply. So he's got a great relationship. But Daniel, what's cool about Daniel is I met him about two, three years ago at a, a lunch and leadership event uh, at Kilgore, Jason's first annual lunch and leadership event. We'll be out there this year. 2023 december 15th just a couple weeks from now for their third annual event so i'm looking forward to seeing daniel out there again but what i want to tell you about daniel he's over delivering when it comes to how he provides service because on last saturday's call the reason there was 40 or 50 people in the room was daniel actually bought and paid for breakfast for the team so anyone who wanted to come in, instead of usually they get on the Zoom call, and a lot of people still were, probably had about 40 or 50 people from around Texas who were still on on, on the video call, just like I was from, from Georgia and a lot of other people from 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 Missouri and North Carolina and and Georgia and just different different areas of the country that get on that call. But Daniel bought and paid for breakfast for the team who wanted to come into their Arlington f facility. They, they're just like a block away from the – the Dallas Cowboy Stadium is where uh, the Kilgore operations in in the Dallas Fort Worth area are based out of. And so he came over, paid for breakfast, brought breakfast. But that's over delivering in itself on a Saturday morning. But but check this out. He he really over delivered. He cooked it on site. So not only did he pay for breakfast and deliver it, but it wasn't cooked when he delivered it. He had to cook it. And he cooked it right there on site. That, that, that's that's over-delivering. And we're going to be talking about things like that. But when, when I saw that, I thought, uh, Daniel, and I know he's got this book and he's read it and he's read some of our other books. But he's also on that call. And he's been on that call for years, every Saturday. He participates. He's building a relationship with them that's phenomenal with his customer and client. But that ain't why he's only – the only reason he's on the call is he's growing and, and developing himself too. It was evident when he provided that that – that over the top service for for his client and customer for the people who work in the company not just taking jason the big dog out for lunch so so daniel if you were to be listed i'm proud of you man that was a, a great great example and because of your example i was able to share it here on the podcast so 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 maybe you hear this shout out either way you earned it you deserve it so let's get into chapter eight we're talking about leveraging your character you will either launch you or limit you and i can tell you daniel's character that morning la launched him and it helped jason uh launch his team to the next level and beyond but when i mention you need to develop your character I'm, I'm not assuming you're a bad salesperson and need to become a good salesperson Ca character is much more complex and dynamic than than these two very simple and, and vague words Ca character can't simply be defined as good or bad but that's what a lot of people think character means it means you're good or bad it doesn't mean you're good or bad but but that's relative but in general character is every single thing that you do is everything that you are it's how you do what you do it's why you do what you do that daniel's character was on full display when he came in and cooked breakfast for those folks because he could have just bought them some biscuits and put them in a bag and brought them in there and handed them out, and everybody would have thought that was cool. But, but that ain't what he did. But every book I've ever written, along with every leadership development and personal growth book I've ever read, has been about character. There, there are many tens of thousands of these books, hundreds of thousands, maybe even more than that. But if you truly want to learn about character, you must be prepared to go extremely deep and extremely wide. And, and that's why, you know, I, I recommend to people 80% of your intentional growth be in the area of character. 
you got to learn a competency. You got to have a competency, but your character is going to either launch or limit whatever competency you do have. So don't forget about your competency. Most people have far more than enough competency. What they don't have enough of is character. Most people have enough competency to, 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 to accomplish the mission, but they don't have enough character to accomplish the mission or to accomplish the mission at the level they want to accomplish it. So I'm not trying to fix you as you listen to this podcast because I don't think there's anything wrong with you. But since you're listening, my, my assumptions are you're a person and you want to be a better person. So you're a human being and you want to be a better human being. That, that's pretty much the only reason I could think people would want to listen to me. I'm also assuming you want to increase your sales and improve your life if you're a professional salesperson. If you're not a professional salesperson, I assume you'd like to increase your income and improve your life. But again, if you're not in professional sales role, if you want to raise, guess what you got to do? You got to sell yourself. If you want a promotion, guess what you got to do? You got to sell yourself. If you want to leave your company and go get another job, you go into the interview, guess what you got to do? You got to sell yourself. Everybody's in sales. That's a cliche that a lot of people say, but, but everybody's in sales. It ain't really just a cliche. It's a fact. It doesn't mean you're selling a, a product or service because everybody is always selling themselves. When I say you need to grow and develop your character, I know you are a very unique and complex individual with all types of feelings and emotions. I also know those feelings and emotions guide you throughout your waking hours. They're behind the choices you do and don't make each and every day of your life. All of this simply confirms one thing. You're a human like the rest of us. That's why this stuff I'm teaching, it doesn't matter what book I'm teaching and talking about. It applies to you because I'm always talking about character development. In the words of M Margaret Jensen, character is the sum total of all of your everyday choices. That's what your character is. It's the sum total of all of your everyday choices. Those choices are based on your values, but you choose your values. Everything's about choices. This means who you are is determined by the choices you make. And I've mentioned that if you want better results, you must change your mind. Changing your mind is a choice. Changing your character is a choice. Becoming a better salesperson is a choice. Becoming a better person is a choice. We've all got choices. And the choices you've made leading up to today have led you to the exact spot you're in, personally and professionally and financially. There's all kinds of ways to look at it. But the main thing is you got to look at it and you got to understand we first make our choices, then our choices make us. The good thing about it, no matter where you're at, especially if it ain't a good spot, you still breathing, you ain't out of choices yet. You still make some choices. You make some changes. When speaking about character, I always reference Henry Cloud's definition. Character is the ability to meet the demands of reality. I love that. I love that definition from Dr. Henry Cloud. It's a simple definition that isn't so simple. It covers it all. And there's a lot to cover when it comes to character. If you can't meet the demands of reality, you have a character problem. This principle applies to us all. If you're losing sales, you should be making, you have a character problem. If, you, if you're not getting the job when you go for an interview, you have a character problem. You can say, well, they told me I didn't have the right competency. Well, your character is going to determine what competency you have. If you need a competency to get a job that you want and you won't go get the competency you need to get the job that you want, you got a character problem. 
If you need more sales and can't figure out how to get them, you have a character problem. If you need more money to have a better life and you can't figure out how to get it, you got a character problem. See how this works? I don't know if you got your mirror out, but I, I got mine out. You borrow it if you want to. That's what I'm doing. I'm loaning it to you through this podcast, so you, you might already start looking at it. But if you know how to get more sales, but you want to actually do what you know you should do to get them, you have a character and an integrity problem. So knowing what to do, but not doing it, is an integrity issue, which is a character problem. They're kind of the same thing, but you can break them apart. Like you can break character down into many components. Integrity is one of them, but then that, that, that component's made up of a lot more components. And that's what you find out when you start learning about character. I also like Dr. Henry Cloud's definition of integrity. He says integrity is the courage to meet the demands of reality. So remember, character is the ability to meet the demands of reality. Integrity is the courage to meet the demands of reality. Therefore, to improve our character, we must increase our ability to do and or develop the courage to do what we already know we should be doing. This may include something that we should stop doing. You know, you, talk, you start talking to people or I start talking to people about having a better life. And for a lot of times, first thing you start hearing, I start talking about reading books and all this sort of stuff. Oh, I ain't got time. You got to know how busy I am. And then I start talking to them about, start asking some questions about what they could stop doing. They got all kinds of things they could stop doing. But they don't want to stop doing them. They just want to say, make the excuse they don't have time to read. Or they don't have time to listen to podcasts. All these sort of things. You may be listening while you're driving. Guess what most people who have a job do? They drive. So people have time. It depends on what they want to do with their time. But stop doing something doesn't require any extra time. And it actually allows you to take that extra time that you're going to create extra capacity, I should say, when you stop doing something. You're going to have the same amount of time every day no matter what you do. So stop, it, stop doing something doesn't give you more time. What it does is allows you to better utilize the time that you're going to have. So what you need to stop doing so you can start doing some things. When it comes to leveraging your character to create your sales and improve your word of mouth, as a salesperson, it's not just about what you should start doing. Many salespeople are holding themselves back because of the things they won't stop doing. I just read the other day, I was listening to Myron Golden on his YouTube channel, and or I was watching him, and he said he learned this from his daughter. His daughter taught him, taught him that no, N-O, period, is a complete sentence. Some of you may need to learn that. No is a complete sentence. When we start talking about stop doing things, saying no to the wrong things will give you the space to say yes to the right things. It says easy, but it does hard. And I, one of my mentors, I used to be, mentored by him i don't really you know get involved with him much anymore but in 2014 i had he invited me to speak on stage with him in los angeles and Rio was he had already invited her to do it and i just went there to 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 watch her do it to be a part of it to be her cheerleader and supporter and when he met me and found out that i i do the same stuff as Rio, he invited me to speak on on stage at his event so that that was pretty cool but that was way back 2014 when I was involved with, with Les Brown more, but well, he made this remark during one of the training sessions when I was with him. He says, in life, if you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. That's, that's some good stuff from Les. And I say, do the hard things. You could also say in sales, if you do what's easy, Sales will be hard to come by. But if you do what's hard, sales will be easy to come by. See how a principle works? You can apply it in any situation. 
So here's an integrity challenge. It won't help me, but it will help you. And that's my goal, but, but I can't do the work for you. You understand? You, you got to do the work. Just like listening to this podcast or reading a book. And Myron Golden said this, and I loved it. I already knew it, but he said it in a, in a simple way that I, I like it. It's stuck with me. I'll be using it. I'll be saying it. He said, learning about something is not the same as learning it. So what you're learning on these podcasts, you're learning about something. When you read one of my books, you're learning about something. You haven't learned it until you can apply it. And even then, you truly haven't learned it until you can master applying it, which means you apply it in all situations. You don't have to think about it. It's, it comes from your subconscious. But if you're serious about changing your mind and improving your results, especially as a salesperson, that's what we're talking about. That's the focus of this, the context of this series. Make a list right now. Don't wait. On the list, write down all the things you already know you should stop doing. If you're driving or whatever, you need to make sure, pause this, look what time zone or what the time stamp is on the uh, the podcast so you can go back to it. Because remember, all you're doing is learning about it right now. You ain't learning nothing. You're just learning about something. But list all the things you already know you should stop doing. Even if you don't want to stop doing them. Maybe something you really love to do. And you're not going to stop doing it. But you know you should stop doing it. List, list all these things that you actually could stop doing. Things that waste your time, your money, your energy. Could be your peace of mind. Things that in no way will improve your results. Here's some examples that may not apply to you. Social media, hobbies, beverages. You know what I'm talking about. And when you're thinking about beverages, don't forget the recovery time sometimes. I know that's one of the things I said no to. One of the things I stopped doing in 2012, I ain't had a drop of alcohol since. I don't, I don't care what you do, but you ought to be caring what you do. And I ain't telling you stop doing that if you drink alcohol. I'm just telling you at some point in my life, it was 2020, 2012, 11 years ago today, one of the things I stopped doing, drinking alcohol. Started saving me money, started saving me time, improved my energy, and I didn't have to worry about hangovers ever again in my life. So my life got better. I ain't telling you to do that, but telling you to be aware of that. Socializing. Something else you could stop doing. Depends on what it is. I used to socialize purely to waste my time. One of the things I did at the bar, I was socializing. I was drinking, wasting my money, wasting my time, wasting my life. But at the time, it didn't make any difference because I wasn't headed anywhere. That, that, that made a difference. But as I started growing, I figured that one out and stopped doing that. But again, you don't have to stop doing that, but you need to be aware of it. It would be something you could put on your list. Doesn't mean you're going to stop doing it, but it is something you could stop doing, right? That's what I was talking about. Playing games on your phone or your computer or your TV. I'm still on the list of things. And again, they may not apply to you, but they might. Sleeping more than needed. I remember one year for a whole year, Rhea only slept six hours was the max. She was so busy. She was going to school. She was working full time. She was teaching group fitness full time. She was reading these type books all the time. She graduated with a with a 4.0 GPA. All the way from 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 getting her GED all the way to graduating with a, a master's in business administration, getting her MBA. And she kept a perfect house. And we was mountain bike racing. We was riding two, three thousand miles a year on a mountain bike. Plus racing at that time about 17 races around Alabama and Georgia. We were busy. She was extremely busy. So she gave up a couple hours of sleep. Every day for like a year. 
It's okay if you don't plan to stop doing them, remember. Just write them down so you can see them all in a big list. When you're done, go back and estimate the time dedicated to each per week and the dollars dedicated to each per week. It will cost nothing in terms of time or money to stop doing these things. What is preventing you from doing what you know you should do? This is assuming you want to climb to the next level and beyond. If you're cool with coasting through life, just keep doing what you're doing. But if you want to climb to the next level and beyond, regardless of what level of life you're at, personally and professionally, you got to become intentional. So what's preventing you from doing what you know you should do? It's a lack of integrity. Doesn't mean you're a bad person, but it means you lack integrity. If you know you should stop doing things, and you're not stop doing, and you're not going to stop doing them. Stop thinking about it. Just do it. Whatever that is for you. Integrity sales. Character sales. Integrity sales. So as always, I finish up with this. The, the three points at the end of each chapter that's in the book, Seller Beware is what I call that little section. Number one in the Seller Beware section for this chapter on leverage your character. Number one, stop doing what you know you shouldn't be doing. This will free up more time to do the right things. Number two, keep doing what is working for you. If it's working, do more of it. What's stopping you? And number three, under seller beware, start doing what you know you should be doing. There's nothing stopping you but you. I really, really hope you make that list of all the things you could stop doing. I mean, I hear so often how busy. I mean, it's the first thing people... You start talking about intentional growth, what most people start doing, you know, you may not be in that business or in that leadership capacity yet where you're really talking to people, but you might be. If you're gung-ho enough to listen to this podcast, you might be gung-ho, gung-ho enough to go talk to people, try to motivate and inspire them to grow and develop themselves, regardless of where you're at in life or what position you're at. What I know, because I do it all the time, is most people start making an excuse about how busy they are. Number one thing, because I always talk about reading books. Number one thing, I, I ain't got time to read books. I, I promise you, no one has ever told me that, and that was the truth. If people just tell me I don't want to read books, I can live with that. That's the truth. But if they say they ain't got time, I ain't buying that one. Because what I know is everybody sits down on the toilet. Yeah, that's a little joke, but it's also the truth. Remember, if you've ever heard me talk about that, I call it adult potty training. You can grow and develop yourself sitting right on the toilet. Most people reading something anyway. They're just reading something else. Most of the time, what they're reading doesn't matter. People scrolling smartphones all the time, reading something. Most of it doesn't matter. There's a lot of stuff on there that does matter. You can follow me and Rhea on uh, LinkedIn. We put out content every day. We got a newsletter on LinkedIn you can subscribe to once a week. For me, every other week for Rhea, it comes out. Just a little snippet. You can read it in four or five minutes, maybe three or four minutes. But if you're in professional sales, I hope you're going back, if you haven't already, and started at Chapter 1. This was Chapter 8. Got 22 more to go because it's 30 chapters. And if you gung-ho and you serious, I hope you purchase the book. It's available in paperback, ebook, and audio book. If you listen to the podcast, you might like audio books. But I still highly recommend you get a real book. Mark it up, fold it up, make it a tool where you can reference it. Especially if you want to share it with others. You pull out something and open it to a page and read something to somebody, it kind of sticks. All right. Hope you're enjoying this series. Hope you're getting ready for the Christmas season. Hope you're enjoying these holidays that's going to be coming up. Talk to you next time. 
Make it happen or someone else will. It might as well be you. Are you serious about taking your career and your life to the next level and beyond? Check out Max Story's Blue Collar Leadership Series books and others, now available on audio, along with paperback and ebooks at Amazon, iTunes, and Audible. Please visit bluecollarleadership.com to learn about Max books, programs, special offers, certifications, and more. Thank you for listening to the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast.